Hello Internet, today we are going to be talking about trees or tries. I don't really know how to pronounce these, um, but we're going to be talking about data structures here and specifically a version of trees that is intended to help searching for string completion, things like that. Um, so the way this works um, is we have a series of characters making up a word. The tree is structured based off of the characters in that. So I've sort of drawn out how this might look for a few variants of W. So words that start with W. Um, so you'll start it with W and everything will match that. And then some will start with WI. So if we're trying to match like which, um, that's WI, etc. cetera. Um, but that will eliminate that. So the advantage of this is that we're actually only taking a number of searches equal to the, the layers in our tree. So however long our searches, um, or however long the words are, that's as, hot, that's as many searches as we're going to do. And so we can combine a whole bunch of data and a whole bunch of completions into a single thing. So this is really helpful for completing words, um, or in this case, I'm using it for code completion to suggest commands and things that you've already run, uh, using that to suggest it more quickly, rather than trying to search um, explicitly through a list of words, because if I try to search through a list of words, that, that complexity gets significantly higher because then I have to match a word, see if it matches or not, and then start all over again on the next word. This saves that progress effectively and allows us to do that in a much more compact way. Um, it does have some pre-compute costs to it, but that's okay. Um, it, we can just slowly add on to this over time as we add additional completions. So this is sort of what I'm trying to build. Um, luckily, we don't need to build the data structure that already exists. We're just going to talk about how it works, um, and it's sort of laid out there. Um, as you go through characters, you step through your string um, and match each character. You're just going to use that to go to a new node in your tree until you find a leaf node or one that is a terminal node that ends whatever word you're trying to match, and then that is the word that you can uh, return. The cool thing with this is you can use this to suggest completion. So if you've ever been typing inside of a text editor, and it suggested additional things that you could complete it with, this is one way that you can accomplish something like that. That isn't necessarily how current things work, um, but it is one way that they can work. <laughs> um, and so, for example, if we type WOR in our example here, there are two additional um, subnodes, sub or leafs underneath that part of the tree. So uh, if we type WOR, our suggestions would be world and word as potential things that we could complete that with. And so we can continue to sort of expand that. If I type in L, suddenly word is no longer a viable option. And so we're going to el eliminate that. Um, and so you can use that as sort of a way to automatically complete and provide suggestions in real time um, using sort of the completion, but also skipping a whole bunch of searches. So you don't need to like wait. Um, the downside with it being a slow operation, if we use like an explicit um, like brute force way to just search a, search a list, the downside of that is that it's really slow, and if you're trying to type, um, you might type faster than that search can complete, and that is not a great experience. Um, so we're trying to cut that down. That's the goal here. Um, but we're going to go and implement this. I'm going to show you how to do this in tree.net, try.net. Um, there will be a link to that library in the description below. Um, it also is compatible with Unity, which is what I'm using it for. Um, so we actually have the library imported into Unity and are using it in that project. Um, so we're going to recreate basically this tree. Um, and actually do it in code. Uh, so how this works uh, is we need to create a text completion thing. Um, this is just an empty mono behavior that I created beforehand. Um, I need to update my, my font so it, I don't have to do this all the time. Um, but what we're going to do is create a private tree. Um, this library comes with a number of different options. Um, try is the basic one, um, but there's lots of other ones that use different algorithms to uh, improve or perform different things in, in different ways and, and uh, achieve results faster. Um, so this might not be the best thing, but it's the sort of closest to the algorithm that I described. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> and so the way this works um, is it's actually a key value pair. It's matching on strings. Um, so it's keyed based off of strings, but you can store any amount of data in, in this. You don't need to store string data as this. Your data stored in your tree can be something else if that matches your use case. Um, so that's what we're going to work with. We're going to just plug this in and I'm just going to store strings because we're, we're working with that. <laughs> um, 
and this will just be our completions tree. And so now we need to create this by just doing completions tree equals a new tree like this. Um, so just an empty constructor is fine. Some additional more complex trees will require certain parameters to initialize them, but this one doesn't. <laughs> so we don't need to worry about it. And then we can add a few extra bits. Um, so let's just start adding words to this. Um, so the words we selected were uh, which and a few others. I forget which ones. Um, let's also do wizard uh, because that has wi. Um, just to kind of make it a little bit more interesting and let's pull up my diagram and I did world, word, and wonder. Uh, so let's do those three. World, word, and wonder. Uh, and so we're just going to match all of those. And so this um, example might be a little bit odd um, because the key and the value are the same thing. Um, this value on the right hand side is mapped to the generic type of this. Um, so if we wanted this to be an integer, um, all of those would break, um, or my code would break rather. Um, but we could store an integer, or if you want to store something more complicated, like some uh, execution results or, or action or something else, you can do that. Um, this just gives you a way to find it. And then this key is just automatically found for it. Behind the scenes, the data structure is actually going to reconstruct that tree for us and build that out so that we can use and find all of this stuff. So what we're going to do now is just do a few quick searches. Um, so we're just going to say search. Um, and we're going to just search for um, WOR. So what we did at the beginning, um, we're just going to search for that and just say completions.retrieve. So the two operations you have are add, which is going to add something new to this tree, and then retrieve, which is going to go in uh, parse a partial string. Um, so how this works is we can say uh, we're searching for WOR. Um, so we should get world and word as our results, um, and that will return an innumerable set of things. Uh, we can use a link to shorten this. So we can use something like um, like first um, to grab the first thing. Um, or, or take, I think, is the other option, so like take five. Um, what that will do is take the first five results from that re result um, and then return it to you. Um, I need to double check. Um, if, if we were going to actually rely on this, uh, I would double check this retrieve just to make sure it works how we think it does. Um, the reason is because it's written in, in I enumerable, and those are lazily evaluated. I've done a video on this, um, so uh, if you want to learn more, is more about how link um, and enumerable types can process things. But how it is, is uh, it's going to process is as your request objects, it's going to go in, calculate and retrieve them. So by doing a take five, for example, um, you might be able to reduce how much of the tree you crawl, potentially. So for example, on like the first character you type, there may be potentially lots of options, depending on, on what you're solving. Uh, you may not, may not want all of those. Uh, so you can just take as many as you need and then return those. We're just going to use all of them, though. So tangents. <laughs> um, so we're going to grab every result in our search and just print it out. So debug.log of our search, uh, of our result, rather. <laughs> um, and these are strings, so we're just going to print this out. And the result is the value type, so whatever was stored on the right-hand side. Um, so keep that in mind. <laughs> You're going to get the result. Uh, and then we should just be able to run this. So we should get world and word as our two results, and we can use that to kind of uh, work with things. I'm also going to just quickly uh, move this into a public string search so we don't have to recompile this um, and just do wr as our thing. And we're just going to put a search in here. Oh. Um, word sure um, sorry i was using the same same uh variable name in two different places so there is everything that we need to do this we just create the tree we add things to it and then we can retrieve uh subtrees from that based off of uh string matches um so again the, the point of this is that we don't need to go and match every one of those five strings 
um, for this small of a data set, it might actually be faster to do that and just try to map, like iterate over each of those strings. Um, but for larger data sets, um, this will be significantly faster. So that's, that's why we're doing this is because I want to handle tens or hundreds of thousands of potential options and be able to return them in real time without it feeling like your editor is pausing and freezing. Um, so that's the goal. Um, so we're going to plug this in and then just start this. And so this should then run. And hopefully inside of our console, we should get two options. So world and word. Um, and we can go and redo this uh, and do like wi. And that should return witch and wizard as our next two options, because those both match that uh, prefix. And so you can use this to kind of quickly find um, subtrees inside of, inside of things. <laughs> um, and so that's, that's how this works. Um, I'm going to just leave a whole bunch of things, um, but we will be using this in my link to Unity project, um, which you'll see in just a little bit. Um, but that's sort of what we're exploring. I'm trying to build an auto completion thing, so we needed to learn how this works. And so now you hopefully um, know, know how it works a little bit. Um, so this is something you're interested in. There's actually a really good article about how these work. Um, and so, yeah, they're an, they're an option for you. Um, there are other ways to do search completion, um, but this is, this is the one that I understood. <laughs> um, so that's, that's the one that we're, or at least that I'm trying to use. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Um, hopefully this is useful. If you can use it in your video or in your, in your games or projects, um, let me know. This also isn't just a Unity thing. This is something that works across .NET and also across other programming languages as well. This is just an algorithm that is pretty universal. Um, so whether you're using Java or TypeScript or C++ or Rust or Go, it should still work. Um, your library might be a little bit different, but the same principles apply. Um, so yeah, it's there if you need it. Um, but that's it for this video. So um, I guess I'll see you in the next one. So until then, see internet.